1926 Subpart I, Tools, Hand and Power. 1926.300, General Requirements. 1926.300, A, Condition of Tools. All hand and power tools and similar equipment, whether furnished by the employer or the employee, shall be maintained in a safe condition. 1926.300, B, Guarding. 1926.300, B, 1, When power-operated tools are designed to accommodate guards, they shall be equipped with such guards when in use. 1926.300, B, 2, Belts, gears, shafts, pulleys, sprockets, spindles, drums, flywheels, chains, or other reciprocating, rotating or moving parts of equipment shall be guarded if such parts are exposed to contact by employees or otherwise create a hazard. Guarding shall meet the requirements as set forth in American National Standards Institute, the 15.1-1953, our 1958, Safety Code for Mechanical Power Transmission Apparatus. 1926.300, B, 3, Types of Guarding. One or more methods of machine guarding shall be provided to protect the operator and other employees in the machine area from hazards such as those created by point of operation, ingoing nip points, rotating parts, flying chips and sparks. Examples of guarding methods are barrier guards, two-hand tripping devices, electronic safety devices, etc. 1926.300 B. 4. Point of Operation Guarding 1926.300 B. 4. I. Point of Operation is the area on a machine where work is actually performed upon the material being processed. 1926.300 B. 4. 2. The point of operation of machines whose operation exposes an employee to injury shall be guarded. The guarding device shall be in conformity with any appropriate standards therefore, or, in the absence of applicable specific standards, shall be so designed and constructed as to prevent the operator from having any part of his body in the danger zone during the operating cycle. 1926.300 B. 4. 3. Special hand tools for placing and removing material shall be such as to permit easy handling of material without the operator placing a hand in the danger zone. Such tools shall not be in lieu of other guarding required by this section, but can only be used to supplement protection provided. 1926.300 B. 4. 4. The following are some of the machines which usually require point of operation guarding. 1926.300 B. 4. 4. A. Through 1926.300 B. 4. 4. I. Guillotine cutters. Shears. Alligator shears. Powered presses. Milling machines. Power saws. Jointers. Portable power tools. Forming rolls and calendars. 1926.300 B. 5. Exposure of blades. When the periphery of the blades of a fan is less than 7 feet 2.128 meters above the floor or working level, the blades shall be guarded. The guard shall have openings no larger than half an inch, 1.27 centimeters. 1926.300 B. 6. Anchoring Fixed Machinery Machines designed for a fixed location shall be securely anchored to prevent walking or moving. 1926.300 B. 7. Guarding of Abrasive Wheel Machinery Exposure Adjustment Safety guards of the types described in paragraphs B, 8, and 9 of this section, where the operator stands in front of the opening, shall be constructed so that the peripheral protecting member can be adjusted to the constantly decreasing diameter of the wheel. The maximum angular exposure above the horizontal plane of the wheel spindle as specified in paragraphs B, 8, and 9 of this section shall never be exceeded, and the distance between the wheel periphery and the adjustable tongue or the end of the peripheral member at the top shall never exceed a quarter inch, 0.635 centimeters. See figures I1 through I6. 1926.300, B, 8, Bench and Floor Stands. The angular exposure of the grinding wheel periphery and sides for safety guards used on machines known as bench and floor stands should not exceed 90 degrees or one-fourth of the periphery. This exposure shall begin at a point not more than 65 degrees above the horizontal plane of the wheel spindle. See figures I7 and I8 in paragraph B7 of this section. 
Whenever the nature of the work requires contact with the wheel below the horizontal plane of the spindle, the exposure shall not exceed 125 degrees. See figures I9 and I10. 1926.300 B9 Cylindrical Grinders The maximum angular exposure of the grinding wheel periphery and sides for safety guards used on cylindrical grinding machines shall not exceed 180 degrees. This exposure shall begin at a point not more than 65 degrees above the horizontal plane of the wheel spindle. See figures I11 and I12 and paragraph B7 of this section. 1926.300 C. Personal Protective Equipment Employees using hand and power tools and exposed to the hazard of falling, flying, abrasive, and splashing objects, or exposed to harmful dusts, fumes, mists, vapors, or gases shall be provided with the particular personal protective equipment necessary to protect them from the hazard. All personal protective equipment shall meet the requirements and be maintained according to subparts D and E of this part. 1926.300 D. Switches 1926.300 D. 1. All handheld powered platen sanders, grinders with wheels 2 inch diameter or less, routers, planers, laminate trimmers, nibblers, shears, scroll saws, and jigsaws with blade shanks 1 fourth of an inch wide or less may be equipped with only a positive on off control. 1926.300 D. 2. All handheld powered drills, tappers, fastener drivers, horizontal, vertical, and angle grinders with wheels greater than 2 inches in diameter, disc sanders, belt sanders, reciprocating saws, saber saws, and other similar operating powered tools shall be equipped with a momentary contact on off control and may have a lock on control provided the turn off can be accomplished by a single motion of the same finger or fingers that turn it on. 1926.300 D3 all other handheld powered tools such as circular saws, chainsaws, and percussion tools without positive accessory holding means shall be equipped with a constant pressure switch that will shut off the power when the pressure is released. 1926.300 D4 The requirements of this paragraph shall become effective on July 15, 1972. 1926.300 D5 Exception, this paragraph does not apply to concrete vibrators, concrete breakers, powered tampers, jackhammers, rock drills, and similar hand-operated power tools. 1926.301, Hand Tools. 1926.301, A, Employers shall not issue or permit the use of unsafe hand tools. 1926.301, B, Wrenches, including adjustable, pipe, end, and socket wrenches shall not be used when jaws are sprung to the point that slippage occurs. 1926.301 C. Impact tools such as drift pins, wedges, and chisels shall be kept free of mushroomed heads. 1926.301 D. The wooden handles of tools shall be kept free of splinters or cracks and shall be kept tight in the tool. OSHA 1926.302 Power Operated Hand Tools 1926.302 A. Electric Power Operated Tools 1926.302 A. 1. Electric Power Operated Tools shall either be of the approved double insulated type or grounded in accordance with subpart K of this part. 1926.302 A. 2. The use of electric cords for hoisting or lowering tools shall not be permitted. 1926.302 B. Pneumatic Power Tools 1926.302 B1 Pneumatic power tools shall be secured to the hose or whip by some positive means to prevent the tool from becoming accidentally disconnected. 1926.302 B2 Safety clips or retainers shall be securely installed and maintained on pneumatic impact percussion tools to prevent attachments from being accidentally expelled. 1926.302 B3 All pneumatically driven nailers staplers and other similar equipment provided with automatic fastener feed, which operate at more than 100 psi. Pressure at the tool shall have a safety device on the muzzle to prevent the tool from ejecting fasteners, unless the muzzle is in contact with the work surface. 1926.302 B. 4. Compressed air shall not be used for cleaning purposes except where reduced to less than 30 psi and then only with effective chip guarding and personal protective equipment which meets the requirements of subpart E of this part.
The 30P SI requirement does not apply for concrete form, mill scale, and similar cleaning purposes. 1926.302 B5 The manufacturer's safe operating pressure for hoses, pipes, valves, filters, and other fittings shall not be exceeded. 1926.302 B6 The use of hoses for hoisting or lowering tools shall not be permitted. 1926.302 B7 All hoses exceeding half an inch inside diameter shall have a safety device at the source of supply or branch line to reduce pressure in case of hose failure. 1926.302 B8 Airless spray guns of the type which atomize paints and fluids at high pressures, 1,000 pounds or more per square inch, shall be equipped with automatic or visible manual safety devices which will prevent pulling of the trigger to prevent release of the paint or fluid until the safety device is manually released. 1926.302 B9 In lieu of the above, a diffuser nut which will prevent high pressure, high velocity release, while the nozzle tip is removed plus a nozzle tip guard which will prevent the tip from coming into contact with the operator, or other equivalent protection, shall be provided. 1926.302 C. Fuel-Powered Tools 1926.302 C. 1. All fuel-powered tools shall be stopped while being refueled, serviced, or maintained, and fuel shall be transported, handled, and stored in accordance with subpart F of this part. 1926.302 C. 2. When fuel-powered tools are used in enclosed spaces, the applicable requirements for concentrations of toxic gases and use of personal protective equipment, as outlined in subparts D and E of this part, shall apply. 1926.302 D. Hydraulic power tools. 1926.302 D. 1. The fluid used in hydraulic powered tools shall be fire resistant fluids approved under Schedule 30 of the UUS. Bureau of Mines, Department of the Interior, and shall retain its operating characteristics at the most extreme temperatures to which it will be exposed. 1926.302 D. 2. The manufacturer's safe operating pressures for hoses, valves, pipes, filters, and other fittings shall not be exceeded. 1926.302 E. Powder Actuated Tools 1926.302 E. 1. Only employees who have been trained in the operation of the particular tool in use shall be allowed to operate a powder actuated tool. 1926.302 E. 2. The tool shall be tested each day before loading to see that safety devices are in proper working condition. The method of testing shall be in accordance with the manufacturer's recommended procedure. 1926.302 E3 Any tool found not in proper working order or that develops a defect during use shall be immediately removed from service and not used until properly repaired. 1926.302 E4 Personal protective equipment shall be in accordance with subpart E of this part. 1926.302 E5 Tools shall not be loaded until just prior to the intended firing time. Neither loaded nor empty tools are to be pointed at any employees. Hands shall be kept clear of the open barrel end. 1926.302 E6 Loaded tools shall not be left unattended. 1926.302 E7 Fasteners shall not be driven into very hard or brittle materials including, but not limited to, cast iron, glazed tile, surface hardened steel, glass block, live rock, face brick, or hollow tile. 1926.302 E8 Driving into materials easily penetrated shall be avoided unless such materials are backed by a substance that will prevent the pin or fastener from passing completely through and creating a flying missile hazard on the other side. 1926.302 E9 No fastener shall be driven into a spalled area caused by an unsatisfactory fastening. 1926.302 E10 Tools shall not be used in an explosive or flammable atmosphere. 1926.302 E11 All tools shall be used with the correct shield, guard, or attachment recommended by the manufacturer. 1926.302 E12 Powder actuated tools used by employees shall meet all other applicable requirements of American National Standards Institute, a 10.3-1970. Safety Requirements for Explosive Actuated Fastening Tools
OSHA 1926.303, Abrasive Wheels and Tools. 1926.303, A, Power. All grinding machines shall be supplied with sufficient power to maintain the spindle speed at safe levels under all conditions of normal operation. 1926.303, B, Guarding. 1926.303, B, 1, Grinding machines shall be equipped with safety guards in conformance with the requirements of American National Standards Institute, B7.1-1970, Safety Code for the Use, Care and Protection of Abrasive Wheels, and Paragraph, D, of this section. 1926.303, B, 2, Guarding Design. The safety guard shall cover the spindle end, nut, and flange projections. The safety guard shall be mounted so as to maintain proper alignment with the wheel, and the strength of the fastening shall exceed the strength of the guard, except 1926.303 B 2 I safety guards on all operations where the work provides a suitable measure of protection to the operator may be so constructed that the spindle end, nut, and outer flange are exposed, and where the nature of the work is such as to entirely cover the side of the wheel, the side covers of the guard may be omitted, and 1926.303 B 2 2 The spindle end, nut, and outer flange may be exposed on machines designed as portable saws. 1926.303 C Use of abrasive wheels. 1926.303 C 1 Floor stand and bench mounted abrasive wheels, used for external grinding, shall be provided with safety guards, protection hoods. The maximum angular exposure of the grinding wheel periphery and sides shall be not more than 90 degrees, except that when work requires contact with the wheel below the horizontal plane of the spindle, the angular exposure shall not exceed 125 degrees. In either case, the exposure shall begin not more than 65 degrees. Above the horizontal plane of the spindle. Safety guards shall be strong enough to withstand the effect of a bursting wheel. 1926.303 C. 2. Floor and bench mounted grinders shall be provided with work rests which are rigidly supported and readily adjustable. Such work rests shall be kept at a distance not to exceed 1 8 inch from the surface of the wheel. 1926.303 C. 3. Cup type wheels used for external grinding shall be protected by either a revolving cup guard or a band type guard in accordance with the provisions of the American National Standards Institute, B7.1-1970 Safety Code for the Use, Care, and Protection of Abrasive Wheels. All other portable abrasive wheels used for external grinding shall be provided with safety guards, protection hoods, meeting the requirements of paragraph C5 of this section, except as follows. 1926.303 C 3 I When the work location makes it impossible, a wheel equipped with safety flanges, as described in paragraph C 6 of this section, shall be used. 1926.303 C 3 2 When wheels 2 inches or less in diameter which are securely mounted on the end of a steel mandrel are used. 1926.303 C 4 Portable abrasive wheels used for internal grinding shall be provided with safety flanges, protection flanges, meeting the requirements of paragraph C6 of this section, except as follows. 1926.303 C4 I, when wheels 2 inches or less in diameter which are securely mounted on the end of a steel mandrel are used. 1926.303 C4 2, if the wheel is entirely within the work being ground while in use. 1926.303 C5 When safety guards are required, they shall be so mounted as to maintain proper alignment with the wheel, and the guard and its fastenings shall be of sufficient strength to retain fragments of the wheel in case of accidental breakage. The maximum angular exposure of the grinding wheel periphery and sides shall not exceed 180 degrees. 1926.303 C6 When safety flanges are required, they shall be used only with wheels designed to fit the flanges. Only safety flanges, of a type and design and properly assembled so as to ensure that the pieces of the wheel will be retained in case of accidental breakage, shall be used. 1926.303 C7 All abrasive wheels shall be closely inspected and ring tested before mounting to ensure that they are free from cracks or defects. 1926.303 C8 Grinding wheels shall fit freely on the spindle and shall not be forced on. The spindle nut shall be tightened only enough to hold the wheel in place. 1926.303 C9 
All employees using abrasive wheels shall be protected by eye protection equipment in accordance with the requirements of subparty of this part, except when adequate eye protection is afforded by eye shields which are permanently attached to the bench or floor stand. 1926.303 d. Other requirements. All abrasive wheels and tools used by employees shall meet other applicable requirements of American National Standards Institute, B7.1-1970, Safety Code for the Use, Care and Protection of Abrasive Wheels. 1926.303 e. Work Rests. On offhand grinding machines, work rests shall be used to support the work. They shall be of rigid construction and designed to be adjustable to compensate for wheel wear. Work rests shall be kept adjusted closely to the wheel with a maximum opening of 1 8 inch 0.3175 cm, to prevent the work from being jammed between the wheel and the rest, which may cause wheel breakage. The work rest shall be securely clamped after each adjustment. The adjustment shall not be made with the wheel in motion. 1926.304 Woodworking Tools 1926.304 A. Disconnect Switches all fixed-power, driven woodworking tools shall be provided with a disconnect switch that can either be locked or tagged in the off position. 1926.304 b. Speeds The operating speed shall be etched or otherwise permanently marked on all circular saws over 20 inches in diameter or operating at over 10,000 peripheral feet per minute. Any saw so marked shall not be operated at a speed other than that marked on the blade. When a marked saw is retentioned for a different speed, the marking shall be corrected to show the new speed. 1926.304 c. Self-feed. Automatic feeding devices shall be installed on machines whenever the nature of the work will permit. Feeder attachments shall have the feed rolls or other moving parts covered or guarded so as to protect the operator from hazardous points. 1926.304 d. Guarding. All portable, power-driven circular saws shall be equipped with guards above and below the baseplate or shoe. The upper guard shall cover the saw to the depth of the teeth, except for the minimum arc required to permit the base to be tilted for bevel cuts. The lower guard shall cover the saw to the depth of the teeth, except for the minimum arc required to allow proper retraction and contact with the work. When the tool is withdrawn from the work, the lower guard shall automatically and instantly return to the covering position. 1926.304 e. Personal Protective Equipment All personal protective equipment provided for use shall conform to subpart e of this part. 1926.304 f. Other Requirements All woodworking tools and machinery shall meet other applicable requirements of American National Standards Institute, January 1, 1961, Safety Code for Woodworking Machinery. 1926.304 g. Radial saws. 1926.304 g. 1. The upper hood shall completely enclose the upper portion of the blade down to a point that will include the end of the saw arbor. The upper hood shall be constructed in such a manner and of such material that it will protect the operator from flying splinters, broken saw teeth, etc., and will defect sawdust away from the operator. The sides of the lower exposed portion of the blade shall be guarded to the full diameter of the blade by a device that will automatically adjust itself to the thickness of the stock and remain in contact with stock being cut to give maximum protection possible for the operation being performed. 1926.304 e. Personal Protective Equipment All personal protective equipment provided for use shall conform to subpart e of this part. 1926.304 f. Other requirements. All woodworking tools and machinery shall meet other applicable requirements of American National Standards Institute, January 1, 1961, Safety Code for Woodworking Machinery. 1926.304 g. Radial saws. 1926.304 g. 1. The upper hood shall completely enclose the upper portion of the blade down to a point that will include the end of the saw arbor. The upper hood shall be constructed in such a manner and of such material that it will protect the operator from flying splinters, broken saw teeth, etc., and will defect sawdust away from the operator. 
The sides of the lower exposed portion of the blade shall be guarded to the full diameter of the blade by a device that will automatically adjust itself to the thickness of the stock and remain in contact with stock being cut to give maximum protection possible for the operation being performed. 1926.305 Jack Lever and Ratchet, Screw, and Hydraulic 1926.305 A General Requirements 1926.305 A 1 the manufacturer's rated capacity shall be legibly marked on all jacks and shall not be exceeded. 1926.305 A. 2. All jacks shall have a positive stop to prevent over-travel. 1926.305 B. Reserved. 1926.305 C. Blocking. When it is necessary to provide a firm foundation, the base of the jack shall be blocked or cribbed. Where there is a possibility of slippage of the metal cap of the jack, a wood block shall be placed between the cap and the load. 1926.305 D. 1926.305 D. 1. Operation and Maintenance. 1926.305 D. 1. I. After the load has been raised, it shall be cribbed, blocked, or otherwise secured at once. 1926.305 D. 1. 2. Hydraulic jacks exposed to freezing temperatures shall be supplied with an adequate antifreeze liquid. 1926.305 D. 1. 3. All jacks shall be properly lubricated at regular intervals. 1926.305 D. 1. 4. Each jack shall be thoroughly inspected at times which depend upon the service conditions. Inspections shall be not less frequent than the following. 1926.305 D. 1. 4. A. For constant or intermittent use at one locality, once every six months. 1926.305 D. 1. 4. B. For jacks sent out of shop for special work, when sent out and when returned. 1926.305 D. 1. 4. C. For a jack subjected to abnormal load or shock, immediately before and immediately thereafter. 1926.305 D. 1. V. Repair or replacement parts shall be examined for possible defects. 1926.305 D16 Jacks which are out of order shall be tagged accordingly and shall not be used until repairs are made. 1926.306 Air Receivers. 1926.306 A General Requirements. 1926.306 A1 Application. This section applies to compressed air receivers and other equipment used in providing and utilizing compressed air for performing operations such as cleaning, drilling, hoisting, and shipping. On the other hand, however, this section does not deal with the special problems created by using compressed air to convey materials nor the problems created when men work in compressed air as in tunnels and caissons. This section is not intended to apply to compressed air machinery and equipment used on transportation vehicles such as steam railroad cars, electric railway cars, and automotive equipment. 1926.306 A. 2. New and existing equipment. 1926.306 A. 2. I. All new air receivers installed after the effective date of these regulations shall be constructed in accordance with the 1968 edition of the AESEME. Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code Section 8. 1926.306 A. 2. 2. All safety valves used shall be constructed, installed and maintained in accordance with the AESME. Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code, Section 8 Edition, 1968. 1926.306 B. Installation and Equipment Requirements, 1926.306 B. 1. Installation. Air receivers shall be so installed that all drains, handholes, and manholes therein are easily accessible. Under no circumstances shall an air receiver be buried underground or located in an inaccessible place. 1926.306 B. 2. Drains and Traps A drain pipe and valve shall be installed at the lowest point of every air receiver to provide for the removal of accumulated oil and water. Adequate automatic traps may be installed in addition to drain valves. The drain valve on the air receiver shall be opened and the receiver completely drained frequently and at such intervals as to prevent the accumulation of excessive amounts of liquid in the receiver. 1926.306 B. 3. Gauges and Valves 
1926.306b3 i every air receiver shall be equipped with an indicating pressure gauge so located as to be readily visible and with one or more spring-loaded safety valves the total relieving capacity of such safety valves shall be such as to prevent pressure in the receiver from exceeding the maximum allowable working pressure of the receiver by more than 10 percent 1926.306 b 3 2 no valve of any type shall be placed between the air receiver and its safety valve or valves 1926.306 b 3 3 safety appliances such as safety valves indicating devices and controlling devices shall be constructed located and installed so that they cannot be readily rendered inoperative by any means including the elements 1926.306 b 3. 4. All safety valves shall be tested frequently and at regular intervals to determine whether they are in good operating condition. 1926.307. Mechanical Power Transmission Apparatus. 1926.307a. General Requirements. 1926.307a. 1. This section covers all types and shapes of power transmission belts, except the following when operating at 250 feet per minute or less. 1926.307 a 1 i flat belts 1 inch 2.54 centimeters or less in width 1926.307 a 1 2 flat belts 2 inches 5.08 centimeters or less in width which are free from metal lacings or fasteners 1926.307 a 1 3 round belts half an inch 1.27 centimeters or less in diameter and 1926.307 a 1 4 Single strand V belts, the width of which is 1330 seconds, 1330 seconds, inches or less. 1926.307, A, 2, vertical and inclined belts, paragraphs, E, 3, and 4, of this section, if not more than 2.5 inches, 6.35 centimeters, wide and running at a speed of less than 1,000, 1,000 feet per minute, and if free from metal lacings or fastening, may be guarded with a nip point belt and pulley guard. 1926.307, A, 3, for the textile industry, because of the presence of excessive deposits of lint, which constitute a serious fire hazard, the sides and face sections only of nip point belt and pulley guards are required, provided the guard shall extend at least 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters, beyond the rim of the pulley on the in-running and off-running sides of the belt and at least 2 inches, 5.08 centimeters away from the rim and face of the pulley in all other directions. 1926.307 a 4 this section covers the principal features with which power transmission safeguards shall comply 1926.307 b prime mover guards dash 1926.307 b 1 flywheels flywheels located so that any part is 7 feet 2.128 meters or less above floor or platform shall be guarded in accordance with the requirements of this subparagraph 1926.307 b 1 i with an enclosure of sheet perforated or expanded metal or woven wire 1926.307 b 1 2 with guardrails placed not less than 15 inches 38.1 centimeters nor more than 20 inches 50.8 centimeters from rim when flywheel extends into pit or is within 12 inches 30.48 centimeters of floor a standard tow board shall also be provided 1926.307 b 1 3 when the upper rim of flywheel protrudes through a working floor i t shall be entirely enclosed or surrounded by a guardrail and tow board 1926.307 b 1 4 for flywheels with smooth rims 5 feet 1.52 meters or less in diameter where the preceding methods cannot be applied the following may be used a disc attached to the flywheel in such manner as to cover the spokes of the wheel on the exposed side and present a smooth surface and edge, at the same time providing means for periodic inspection. An open space, not exceeding 4 inches centimeters in width, may be left between the outside edge of the disc and the rim of the wheel if desired, to facilitate turning the wheel over. Where a disc is used, the keys or other dangerous projections not covered by disc shall be cut off or covered. This subdivision does not apply to flywheel with solid web centers. 1926.307 B 1 V adjustable guard to be used for starting engine or for running adjustment may be provided at the flywheel of gas or oil engines. A slot opening for jack bar will be permitted. 
1926.307 B16. Wherever flywheels are above working areas, guards shall be installed having sufficient strength to hold the weight of the flywheel in the event of a shaft or wheel mounting failure. 1926.307 B2. Cranks and connecting rods. Cranks and connecting rods, when exposed to contact, shall be guarded in accordance with paragraphs M and N of this section or by a guardrail as described in paragraph O5 of this section. 1926.307 B3 Tail rods or extension piston rods Tail rods or extension piston rods shall be guarded in accordance with paragraphs M and O of this section or by a guardrail on sides and end, with a clearance of not less than 15, 38.1 cm, nor more than 20 inches, 50.8 cm, when rod is fully extended. 1926.307 C. Shafting, 1926.307 C. 1. Installation. 1926.307 C. 1. I. Each continuous line of shafting shall be secured in position against excessive endwise movement. 1926.307 C. 1. 2. Inclined and vertical shafts particularly inclined idler shafts, shall be securely held in position against endwise thrust. 1926.307 C. 2. Guarding horizontal shafting. 1926.307 C. 2. I. All exposed parts of horizontal shafting 7 feet 2.128 meters or less from floor or working platform, excepting runways used exclusively for oiling or running adjustments, shall be protected by a stationary casing enclosing shafting completely or by a trough enclosing sides and top or sides and bottom of shafting as location requires. 1926.307 C. 2. 2. Shafting under bench machines shall be enclosed by a stationary casing or by a trough at sides and top or sides and bottom as location requires. The sides of the trough shall come within at least 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters, of the underside of table, or if shafting is located near floor within 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters of floor. In every case, the sides of trough shall extend at least 2 inches, 5.08 centimeters, beyond the shafting or protuberance. 1926.307 C. 3. Guarding vertical and inclined shafting. Vertical and inclined shafting 7 feet, 2.128 meters, or less from floor or working platform, excepting maintenance runways, shall be enclosed with a stationary casing in accordance with requirements of paragraphs M and O of this section. 1926.307 C. 4. Projecting shafts ends. 1926.307 C. 4. I. Projecting shaft ends shall present a smooth edge and end and shall not project more than one half the diameter of the shaft unless guarded by non rotating caps or safety sleeves. 1926.307 C4 2 and used keyways shall be filled up or covered. 1926.307 C5 Power transmission apparatus located in basements. All mechanical power transmission apparatus located in basements, towers, and rooms used exclusively for power transmission equipment shall be guarded in accordance with this section, except that the requirements for safeguarding belts, pulleys, and shafting need not be complied with when the following requirements are met. 1926.307 C5 I. The basement, tower, or room occupied by transmission equipment is locked against unauthorized entrance. 1926.307 C5 2. The vertical clearance in passageways between the floor and power transmission beams, ceiling, or any other objects is not less than 5 feet 6 inches. 1.672 M. 1926.307 C5 3. The intensity of illumination conforms to the requirements of ANSI A11.1 1965 R 1970. 1926.307 C5 4. Reserved. 1926.307 C5 V. The route followed by the oiler is protected in such manner as to prevent accident. 1926.307 D. Pulleys. 1926.307 D1. Guarding. Pulleys, any parts of which are 7 feet, 2.128 meters, or less from the floor or working platform shall be guarded in accordance with the standards specified in paragraphs M and O of this section. 
Pulleys serving as balance wheels, e.g., punch presses, on which the point of contact between belt and pulley is more than 6 feet 6 inches. 1.976 m, from the floor or platform, may be guarded with a disc covering the spokes. 1926.307 d, 2, location of pulleys. 1926.307 d, 2, i, unless the distance to the nearest fixed pulley, clutch, or hanger exceeds the width of the belt used. A guide shall be provided to prevent the belt from leaving the pulley on the side where insufficient clearance exists. 1926.307, D, 2, 2, reserved, 1926.307, D, 3, broken pulleys. Pulleys with cracks, or pieces broken out of rims, shall not be used. 1926.307, D, 4, pulley speeds. Pulleys intended to operate at rim speed in excess of manufacturers' normal recommendations shall be specially designed and carefully balanced for the speed at which they are to operate. 1926.307 E, belt, rope, and chain drives. 1926.307 E, 1, horizontal belts and ropes. 1926.307 E, 1, I, where both runs of horizontal belts are 7 feet, 2.128 meters, or less from the floor level. The guard shall extend to at least 15 inches centimeters above the belt or to a standard height, except that where both runs of a horizontal belt are 42 inches centimeters or less from the floor, the belt shall be fully enclosed. 1926.307 E, 1, 2, in power plants or power development rooms, a guard rail may be used in lieu of the guard required by paragraph E, 1, I, of this section. 1926.307 E, 2, Overhead Horizontal Belts. 1926.307 E, 2, I, Overhead Horizontal Belts, with lower parts 7 feet, 2.128 m, or less from the floor or platform, shall be guarded on sides and bottom in accordance with paragraph O, 3, of this section. 1926.307 E, 2, 2, Horizontal overhead belts more than 7 feet 2.128 meters above floor or platform shall be guarded for their entire length under the following conditions. 1926.307 E 2 2 A If located over passageways or workplaces and traveling 1,800 feet or more per minute. 1926.307 E 2 2 B If center to center distance between pulleys is 10 feet 3.04 meters or more. 1926.307 E 2 2 C if belt is 8 inches 20.32 centimeters or more in width. 1926.307 E 2 3 where the upper and lower runs of horizontal belts are so located that passage of persons between them would be possible, the passage shall be either. 1926.307 E 2 3 A completely barred by a guardrail or other barrier in accordance with paragraphs M and O of this section, or 1926.307 E, 2, 3, B, where passage is regarded as necessary. There shall be a platform over the lower run guarded on either side by a railing completely filled in with wire mesh or other filler, or by a solid barrier. The upper run shall be so guarded as to prevent contact therewith either by the worker or by objects carried by him. In power plants only the lower run of the belt need be guarded. 1926.307 E, 2, 4, overhead chain and link belt drives are governed by the same rules as overhead horizontal belts and shall be guarded in the same manner as belts. 1926.307 E, 3, vertical and inclined belts. 1926.307 E, 3, I, Vertical and inclined belts shall be enclosed by a guard conforming to standards in paragraphs M and O of this section. 1926.307 E, 3, 2, all guards for inclined belts shall be arranged in such a manner that a minimum clearance of 7 feet 2.128 meters is maintained between belt and floor at any point outside of guard. 1926.307 E, 4, vertical belts. Vertical belts running over a lower pulley more than 7 feet 2.128 meters above floor or platform shall be guarded at the bottom in the same manner as horizontal overhead belts, if conditions are as stated in paragraphs E, 2, 2, A, and C of this section. 1926.307 E, 5, Cone Pulley Belts 1926.307 E, 5, I, 
The cone belt and pulley shall be equipped with a belt shifter so constructed as to adequately guard the nip point of the belt and pulley. If the frame of the belt shifter does not adequately guard the nip point of the belt and pulley, the nip point shall be further protected by means of a vertical guard placed in front of the pulley and extending at least to the top of the largest step of the cone. 1926.307 E5-2 If the belt is of the endless type or laced with rawhide laces, and a belt shifter is not desired, the belt will be considered guarded if the nip point of the belt and pulley is protected by a nip point guard located in front of the cone extending at least to the top of the largest step of the cone, and formed to show the contour of the cone in order to give the nip point of the belt and pulley the maximum protection. 1926.307 E-5-3 if the cone is located less than 3 feet 0.912 meters from the floor or working platform, the cone pulley and belt shall be guarded to a height of 3 feet 0.912 meters, regardless of whether the belt is endless or laced with rawhide. 1926.307 E6 Belt Tighteners 1926.307 E6 I Suspended counterbalance tighteners and all parts thereof shall be of substantial construction and securely fastened the bearings shall be securely capped. Means must be provided to prevent tightener from falling, in case the belt breaks. 1926.307 E-6-2 When suspended counterweights are used and not guarded by location, they shall be so encased as to prevent accident. 1926.307 F – Gears, Sprockets, and Chains 1926.307 F – 1 – Gears Gears shall be guarded in accordance with one of the following methods. 1926.307 F, 1, I, by a complete enclosure, or 1926.307 F, 1, 2, by a standard guard as described in paragraph O of this section, at least 7 feet, 2.128 meters, high extending 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters above the mesh point of the gears, or 1926.307 F, 1, 3, by a band guard covering the face of gear and having flanges extended inward beyond the root of the teeth on the exposed side or sides. Where any portion of the train of gears guarded by a band guard is less than 6 feet 1.824 meters from the floor a disc guard or a complete exposure to the height of 6 feet 1.824 meters shall be required. 1926.307 F2 Hand Operated Gears Paragraph F1 of this section does not apply to hand-operated gears used only to adjust machine parts and which do not continue to move after hand power is removed. However, the guarding of these gears is highly recommended. 1926.307 F3 Sprockets and Chains All sprocket wheels and chains shall be enclosed unless they are more than 7 feet 2.128 meters above the floor or platform. Where the drive extends over other machine or working areas, protection against falling shall be provided. This subparagraph does not apply to manually operated sprockets. 1926.307 F4 – Openings for oiling When frequent oiling must be done, openings with hinged or sliding self-closing covers shall be provided. All points not readily accessible shall have oil feed tubes if lubricant is to be added while machinery is in motion. 1926.307 G – Guarding Friction Drives The driving point of all friction drives when exposed to contact shall be guarded. All arm or spoke friction drives and all web friction drives with holes in the web shall be entirely enclosed, and all projecting belts on friction drives or exposed to contact shall be guarded. 1926.307 H – Keys, Set Screws, and Other Projections 1926.307 H1 All projecting keys, set screws, and other projections in revolving parts shall be removed or made flush or guarded by metal cover. This subparagraph does not apply to keys or set screws within gear or sprocket casings or other enclosures, nor to keys, set screws, or oil cups in hubs of pulleys less than 20 inches (50.8 cm) in diameter where they are within the plane of the rim of the pulley. 1926.307 H2 it is recommended, however, that no projecting set screws or oil cups be used in any revolving pulley or part of machinery. 1926.307 I, Collars and Couplings, 1926.307 I, 1, Collars. 
All revolving collars, including split collars, shall be cylindrical, and screws or bolts used in collars shall not project beyond the largest periphery of the collar. 1926.307 I, 2, Couplings Shall couplings shall be so constructed as to present no hazard from bolts, nuts, set screws will, however, be permitted where they are covered with safety sleeves or where they are used parallel with the shafting and are countersunk or else do not extend beyond the flange of the coupling. 1926.307 J, Bearings and Facilities for Oiling All drip cups and pans shall be securely fastened. 1926.307 K, Guarding of Clutches, Cut-off Couplings, and Clutch Pulleys. 1926.307 K, 1, Guards Clutches, cut-off couplings, or clutch pulleys having projecting parts, where such clutches are located 7 feet 2.128 meters or less above the floor or working platform, shall be enclosed by a stationary guard constructed in accordance with this section. A U-type guard is permissible. 1926.307 K2 Engine Rooms In engine rooms a guardrail, preferably with tow board, may be used instead of the guard required by paragraph K1 of this section, provided such a room is occupied only by engine room attendants. 1926.307 L, belt shifters, clutches, shippers, poles, perches, and fasteners. 1926.307 L, 1, belt shifters. 1926.307 L, 1, I, tight and loose pulleys on all new installations made on or after August 31, 1971 shall be equipped with a permanent belt shifter provided with mechanical means to prevent belt from creeping from loose to tight pulley. It is recommended that old installations be changed to conform to this rule. 1926.307 L, 1, 2, belt shifter and clutch handles shall be rounded and be located as far as possible from danger of accidental contact, but within easy reach of the operator. Where belt shifter are not directly located over a machine or bench, the handle shall be cut off 6 feet 6 inches. 1.976 m above floor level. 1926.307 l 2 belt shippers and shipper poles. The use of belt poles as substitutes for mechanical shifter is not recommended. 1926.307 l 3 belt perches. Where loose pulleys or idlers are not practicable, belt perches in form of brackets, rollers, etc shall be used to keep idle belts away from the shafts. 1926.307 L, 4, Belt Fasteners Belts which of necessity must be shifted by hand in belts within 7 feet 2.128 meters of the floor or working platform which are not guarded in accordance with this section shall not be fastened with metal in any case, nor with any other fastening which, by construction or wear will constitute an accident hazard. 1926.307 M, Standard Guards, General Requirements, 1926.307 M, 1, Materials, 1926.307 M, 1, I, Standard Conditions shall be secured by the use of the following materials. Expanded metal, perforated or solid sheet metal, wire mesh on a frame of angle iron, or iron pipe securely fastened to floor or frame of machine. 1926.307 M, 1, 2, all metal should be free from burrs and sharp edges. 1926.307 M, 2, Methods of Manufacturer. 1926.307 M, 2, I, Expanded metal, sheet or perforated metal, and wire mesh shall be securely fastened to frame. 1926.307 N, Reserved. 1926.307 O, Approved Materials, 1926.307 O, 1, Minimum Requirements. The materials and dimensions specified in this paragraph shall apply to all guards, except horizontal overhead belts, rope, cable, or chain guards more than 7 feet 2.128 meters above floor or platform. 1926.307 O, 1, I, Reserved, 1926.307 O, 1, I, A, all guards shall be rigidly braced every 3 feet 0.912 meters or fractional part of their height to some fixed part of machinery or building structure. Where guard is exposed to contact with moving equipment additional strength may be necessary. 1926.307 O, 2, Wood Guards. 
1926.307, O, 2, I, woodguards may be used in the woodworking and chemical industries, in industries where the presence of fumes or where manufacturing conditions would cause the rapid deterioration of metal guards, also in construction work and in locations outdoors where extreme cold or extreme heat make metal guards and railings undesirable. In all other industries, wood guards shall not be used. 1926.307, O, 3, Guards for Horizontal Overhead Belts. 1926.307, O, 3, I, Guards for Horizontal Overhead Belts shall run the entire length of the belt and follow the line of the pulley to the ceiling or be carried to the nearest wall, thus enclosing the belt effectively. Where belts are so located as to make it impracticable to carry the guard to wall or ceiling, Construction of guards shall be such as to enclose completely the top and bottom runs of belt and the face of pulleys. 1926.307, O, 3, 2, reserved, 1926.307, O, 3, 3, suitable reinforcement shall be provided for the ceiling rafters or overhead floor beams, where such is necessary, to sustain safely the weight and stress likely to be imposed by the guard. The interior surface of all guards, by which is meant the surface of the guard with which a belt will come in contact, shall be smooth and free from all projections of any character, except where construction demands it. Protruding shallow roundhead rivets may be used. Overhead belt guards shall be at least one quarter wider than belt which they protect, except that this clearance need not in any case exceed 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters, on each side. Overhead rope drive and block and roller chain drive guards shall be not less than 6 inches, 15.24 centimeters, wider than the drive on each side. In overhead silent chain drive guards where the chain is held from lateral displacement on the sprockets, the side clearances required on drives of 20 inch, 50.8 centimeters, centers, or under shall be not less than a quarter inch, 0.635 centimeters, from the nearest moving chain part, and on drives of over half an inch, 1.27 centimeters, from the nearest moving chain part. 1926.307, O, 4, Guards for Horizontal Overhead Rope and Chain Drives Overhead rope and chain drive guard construction shall conform to the rules for overhead belt guard. 1926.307, O, 5, Guard Rails and Tow Boards 1926.307, O, 5, I, Guard Rail shall be 42 inches, 106.68 centimeters in height, with mid-rail between top rail and floor. 1926.307, O, 5, 2, posts shall be not more than 8 feet, 2.432 meters apart, they are to be permanent and substantial, smooth, and free from protruding nails, bolts, and splinters. If made of pipe, the post shall be 1 a quarter inches, 3.175 centimeters, inside diameter, or larger. If made of metal shapes or bars their section shall be equal in strength to that of 1 and a half, 3.81 centimeters, by 1 and a half, 3.81 cm by March 16th inch angle iron. If made of wood, the posts shall be 2 by 4, 2 by 4 inches or larger. The upper rail shall be 2 by 4, 2 by 4 inches, or 2 1 by 4, 1 by 4 strips, one at the top and one at the side of posts. The mid rail may be 1 by 4, 1 by 4 inches or more. Where panels are fitted with expanded metal or wire mesh, the middle rails may be omitted. Where guard is exposed to contact with moving equipment, additional strength may be necessary. 1926.307, O, 5, 3, tow boards shall be 4 inches, 10.16 centimeters or more in height, of wood, metal, or of metal grill not exceeding 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters a mesh. 1926.307, P, care of equipment, 1926.307, P, 1, general. All power transmission equipment shall be inspected at intervals not exceeding 60 days and be kept in good working condition at all times. 1926.307, P, 2. Shafting. 1926.307, P, 2, I. Shafting shall be kept in alignment, free from rust and excess oil or grease. 1926.307, P, 2, 2. Where explosives, explosive dusts, flammable vapors or flammable liquids exist, the hazard of static sparks from shafting shall be carefully considered. 1926.307, P, 3, Bearings. Bearings shall be kept in alignment and properly adjusted. 
1926.307, p. 4, hangers. Hangers shall be inspected to make certain that all supporting bolts and screws are tight and that supports of hanger boxes are adjusted properly. 1926.307, p. 5, pulleys. 1926.307, p. 5, i. Pulleys shall be kept in proper alignment to prevent belts from running off. 1926.307, p. 6, care of belts. 1926.307, p. 6, i. Reserved. 1926.307, p. 6, the second. Inspection shall be made of belts, lacings, and fasteners and such equipment kept in good repair. 1926.307, p. 7, lubrication. The regular oilers shall wear tight-fitting clothing. Machinery shall be oiled when not in motion, wherever possible. 1926.307,